that you think that the, the, the future of you is dictated on the skill of you or that the future of you is dictated on the ability of you. And it's not. And I think that your skill and your ability will increase. Your skill and your ability will increase when you recognize that the future of you has nothing to do with your skill or your ability. Your skill and your ability increases because of your proper um, surrender to the scriptures and how your skill and ability increases. Your skill and ability increases by your level of belief and faith. Based on the level that you believe and on the level of faith that you have, it dictates where you go next. And so since the level of faith that you have dictates your ability and skill, one thing that has to be fixed in our careers is dictating our future on our ability and our skills. A lot of people raise their faith based on their results, your results, aka your ability and your skills. But if you will raise your faith before your ability and your skills, then your ability and your skills will increase. If you understand what I'm saying, saying yes. I want you to understand something. You don't have as much time as you think you do. You don't have tomorrow, next week, and two weeks. You have today and its very moment to pay attention to people who are telling you this is how you do it. And again, if you're watching me on Facebook, I want you to go to my YouTube and watch this because this can completely change your life. So what we battle with is we battle with our faith. You want to be the first millionaire in your family. You want to be the first person to impact a thousand lives. You want to be the first person to make $50,000 a month in your family, whatever it is. The reason why people, can I tell you why you don't hit your goals? You do not hit your goals because your gaze, your, your, your goals are dictated on your faith. And you've allowed your faith to be fueled by your ability and your skill. When your skill and your ability should be fueled on your faith. So based, of my, based on my level of faith dictates my level of skill and ability. Not based on my, my level of skill and ability dictates my faith. Really understand what I'm saying. So I, I tell people all the time, I was doing a training call earlier today and I said, you know what I realized? What I realized is that people don't have as much faith as they say that they do. And I also know then if people don't have as much faith that they faith as they say that they do, they also aren't implementing their, implementing their abilities and skills on the level that they could because there's no way for you to implement, um, uh, to, to really show your skills and your ability with no faith. And so it's this one tweak that you got to be willing to pay to fix. And when I say pay, I mean learn. I mean put your attention towards it. If the scripture says that God is not a man that he should lie, then my question to you is what is the delay of your success? What is the delay of your success? If the Bible says, David told us in Psalms that where there is mentors, where there is mentorship, there is safety. It also says that if you write the vision, Habakkuk 2, 2 tells you, tells you to write the vision and to make it plain. Proverbs tells us that the power of life and death is in the tongue. In Matthew, it tells us if you believe, you'll receive whatever you ask for in prayer. So if we have all these promises, can I ask you a question? What is the delay of the promise coming to pass in your life? Now, people think that these promises are dictated on just knowing them. And the truth is these promises are dictated on your ability to believe that these promises are true. Now. In the secular world, you have people like Earl Nightingale and Bob Proctor and um, James Allen, all, all these different people who have taken scripture 
and writing, written secular books about the promises of the scripture. And some people have gotten a hold to these books and these um, strategies that secular people are using and they believe it. And they believe the principle. And so they have faith on these principles. The number one problem that I see with people who call themselves Christians, followers of Jesus, you don't read the Bible enough to understand the principle and you also don't read books. <laughs> so you have no path, no platform to really get the power of principle. You have no path if you're not reading books. Be honest. Did you open up a book today? Be honest. Did you get trained today? Did you open up the Bible today? And if you did not, you got to understand no matter how much faith you have in your hustle, it is never going to change your future. The only thing that changes your future is your faith. And the only thing that's going to change your future is your ability to enhance your skills and your ability and your skills and your ability only enhances through faith. So what we see is at the end of the road, the only thing that's going to enhance anything is your ability to understand and to respect principle. Uh, I, I turned 36 on December 24th and I recalled when I was 27 and someone was making $5,000 a month on social media and I seen them post that they were making $5,000 a month. And I said, man, I wish I was making $5,000 a month. And when I seen that at that time, watching someone else's dreams or watching someone else's goals seemed so far from me. But what happens is correct environment when you're in the correct environment, it pulls things that you thought were supernatural into the natural, okay? You want to make 10000 a month, 20000 a month? You want to try above 1,000 people? You want to host it? It doesn't matter. Proximity changes things. It changes the supernatural into the natural. Now follow me. The reason why it changes the supernatural into the natural is because if you want to make $10,000 a month and you're in rooms where $10,000 a month is no money, the, 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 the belief system that $10,000 a month, the belief system, meaning this seems like it's so far, it becomes a natural thing because you hang around people who make $10,000 a month. So what we... C is the law of proximity. I'm going to tell you something. I know you may think that you have advanced past training and coaching. I, may, I know you may think that what the coach or the trainer is saying is no big deal to you or you think you know what they're going to say. But you also know that there is something that my mom used to say when she used to tell me, she used to say, spirits are not taught, they're caught. And the reason why the room is so important in 2023 is because you need something to catch on to you. Because if you heard it before and it's not penetrating results from you, if what you are hearing is not manifesting something into physical form for you, then the next thing that we have to do, we have to hear and we have to see. And when you hear and you have to see, that means that you have to go in the room where what it is that you're trying to manifest for yourself, that you are around people who have what you're praying to God for. Because once you're around people that have what you're praying to God for, the law of proximity kicks in. And because you kick it with that type of people, that type of lifestyle becomes something that is normal to you. So here's my question to you. Based on what you wrote, that wrote down on paper for 2023, and again, if you are watching me on Facebook, click on the top message on this video and go on YouTube or come out of this video and click on, click on the YouTube link that is on my Facebook page. 
watch this guess. It's 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 like people have to slow down to speed up. Who's let me ask you a question. Who's who's training you this year? What type of training are you getting? What 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 rooms have you been in? What rooms have you been in this year? Because we're on the 20th. Yeah, we're on the 20th, I think. What's today's date? Mm -hmm. January 20th. January 20th, 2023. Here you are posting, creating, and trying to avoid the part that actually dictates your success. Sanisha, what do you mean? Well, it's the 20th. So from January 1st to January 20th, what coaching have you done? What rooms have you been in? What, which way have you leveraged the law of proximity? And you think, you may think like, mm, I don't know. Guys, you can't keep making rookie mistakes. You can't keep not knowing. At some point, what you hear has to stick. Do you know the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Knowledge is knowing what you're supposed to do and you don't do it. Wisdom is knowing what you're supposed to do and you do it. So we have a lot of people who have a lot of knowledge, but they don't have a lot of wisdom. We have a lot of people who know a lot of stuff but they don't have a lot of wisdom. You have to understand. Okay, so I like to study a lot. And one thing that I've been studying is the, 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 the Ethiopian Bible, right? And so we see there that we just see some words pulled out of the King James Version and it was in the original text and it's not there anymore. And in one of the scriptures that I was reading it, talk, it, it was talking about um, if, 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 a, if a man believes he'll receive whatever he asks for in prayer. And as I was studying the scripture deeper from some of the missing translation of the scripture, that scripture also had something to do with the environment and then as a man thinketh. And so we have all these people that are questioning if they are capable of massive success. And the truth is, everyone is capable of massive success, but most people just simply won't do what it takes. Because what it takes to be successful may be out of your comfort zone. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about three areas of comfort zone that is killing your goals and your dreams. We're going to talk about three areas of comfort zone that if you don't change them and make it make it a, a, a requirement to change it going into the rest of this year, we'll end on January 20, January 20th, 2024, and you will be in the same spot that you're in. And for some of you guys, here's the crazy part, right? For some of you guys, you have been, and if you're watching me on Facebook, come off of my Facebook page. If you haven't noticed, I'm not training on Facebook anymore. Log off of here or click in the comments. I'll leave it in the comments and go on my YouTube and watch this or click on my, come out of here and on the top of my page, go on YouTube and watch it on YouTube. We're talking about, because I'm about to end this here on Facebook. So this is about to end and you can go on Facebook and you can watch this. I mean, on YouTube and the YouTube link is posted on my Facebook page. So if you're on Facebook, go to my YouTube. Okay. So as we pay attention to the comfort zone, the first thing that we have to pay attention to is the law of proximity, okay? I want you to think about your goals and your dreams. You can't, 
Oh my God. I, I, I have been training on this for so long and I, I see that most people won't surrender to the, to the, to the, to the, to the strategy. You can't skip this part. There's no fixing this. There's no way to move past this part. You have to respect this part and it, and you're going to get results right now. If you have an income goal, my question is, who can you call on the phone right now that has the same type of income goal that you have? Why do you think Serena Williams and Venus Williams, why do you think they have coaches? Why do you think Michael Jordan had a coach? Why do you think they're speaking coaches? Why don't you think that they're, why do you think that there are confident coaches? You are not advanced on the level of confidence, speaking and money that you understand you are making that income. It's not until you leverage the law of proximity to get to the next level that you will get to the next level. You've been trying, if you've been trying for two to three years, my first question to you is who is your coach? I've told people a lot of times that I've trained before, if you're getting coached, that's cute. But you know that you're really ready to go to the next level when you're getting mentored. Well, what, 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 you know, what, what is the mentor? Well, the problem is people are used to getting coached for free so much that when it comes time to invest in mentorship, they're not interested. But the problem is, without the law of proximity, with your goals, I'm telling you, you're never going to do it. Let me give you a story. I wanted to make six figures a month so bad at around 30 or 31, uh, 20, 28. And I was around people who had made and were making six figures a month. But you know what? I, though, because those people were so nice to me, I was so familiar with them that I, I started thinking more of them as my friend than my mentor. And because I started to think of them more as my mentor, or my, my friend than my mentor, the lessons that were inside of them to help me hit six figures a month, I didn't practice them. You know, I hear people that are in their 60s and 70s say, if you could go back to your 20 or 20 or, or 20, 20 to 22 year old self, what would you tell yourself? And they would say things like believe bigger sooner and speed it up. And if I could go back, I'm only 35. Thank God for wisdom. But if I could go back to my 27 year old self, now that I understand properly the law of proximity, I would say to myself, Listen to them. Listen, I know you independent. I know you're smart. I know you know how to put things together, but listen. Just listen, Sydney. If you listen, you'll get there faster. Not listening, you may still may still arrive, but you're going to arrive there way later than you need to. So what I had to do is I sought out coaches. I paid one guy $5,000 for three 30-minute conversations. I paid about $10,000 to go to a one-day event. What else did I do? I paid $20,000 for a course, and I got the course and was like, what the heck is this? I flew all, I, I sowed my seed. And what's crazy is, I don't think it's any of the seed that I sowed that was the answer I was looking for. But from the seed sown in the law of proximity, I think God saw that I was serious about what it is that I said that I wanted. And he brought mentors and coaches to me to tell me what I need to do. So if you're manifesting a million dollars a year or two, 3,000 people on your team, blah, 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 blah. Question. When these people are on your, your, in your tribe or in your organization, 
what story do you have to tell them to make them truly believe that you're qualified to lead them? Because I got some stories. I remember one time being in, um, in St. Martin and someone called me and actually my friend David called me and David was making about $750,000 a month. He showed me his checks and he, I had an event in Tampa that week, uh, that following weekend and Bob Proctor was hosting, um, this gallery thing, this, whatever it was. And so for me, I figured I know the scriptures. I don't need to go to any of this stuff you're talking about. And I said, no, I can't go because I, I have an event to go to. I had a copy paste paid event to do in Tampa. And David said to me, he said, oh, he was like, you got to literally he said, oh, you got to cancel that. You need a spiritual experience. And I was thinking to myself, I need a spiritual experience. What are you even talking about? Like, I know the Bible. I can quote, put three of these scriptures together and give you a sermon if that's what you need. He said, no, you need a spiritual encounter. And he told me, he said, listen to the strangest secret. Listen to it every single day for the next 30 days. That's what he told me. And... I had watched trainings and things before, and I had heard that before. But when, I, when we talk about the law of proximity, see, sometimes lessons can't be just taught because I had heard it before. Sometimes they have to be caught. And because I had someone gracious enough to take the time out to call me and tell me what to do for that $100,000 a month, I said, okay. I'm going to listen to the strangest secret every day, okay? And I did. And all of a sudden, in less than a year after that, I was making over $100,000 a month. And it's not that what he said was not what I heard before. It's that sometimes lessons are caught, they're not taught. And from, from a voice or a person, courage is transferred. And it's different to hear somebody tell you to listen to the stranger's secret every day and they ain't making no money or they're not someone you desire to be because I really don't care what you're talking about. But when someone is in a position that you desire to be in and they tell you to do it, then the courage gets transferred. And a lot of people, because you're not leveraging the law of proximity, the problem is no courage has been transferred to you because you're looking for information and that next spirit of winning and courage and, and, and being a champion and taking things to the next level, it has not been transferred. You, you have not had the revelation yet of what you're hearing. So that's why you could read the books and nothing changed. That's why you could get on the trainings that everybody's getting on and nothing changes. That's why you can get off of this training and close your computer and still not do what you're supposed to do because it hasn't been transferred yet. So what you're looking for in 2022, 23 and 24, and I told myself I'm going to stop naming years because it messes up if I'm in 2030. What you're looking for is a spiritual transfer. And the spiritual transfer comes from the law of proximity the law of proximity activates courage. The reason why the law of proximity activates courage is because the law of proximity activates belief. And belief means that your faith has been manifested in physical form. So who is in your phone book or who's coaching you? Who is doing your 30 minutes of coaching at least once a week? Who are you sewing into that's above you, that's pouring back into you? Or do you get on the trainings that everybody gets on? Some things can't be taught, they have to be caught. And you need courage transferred. You know what, you know what's crazy? This is crazy. You know why you get on trainings and everything sounds redundant? It sounds redundant because you still haven't picked up the courage yet, you just picked up the information. You picked up the information so you have the knowledge. You still don't have the wisdom, though. 
Because wisdom activates action. And action gets activated by watching somebody else that is taking you by the hand and saying, come on, let's go. This is what you need to do. This is what, what you need to do. When David told me, no, you need a spiritual transfer. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? He was right. And for you to hit that 20000 a month or $50,000 a month, God is not going to allow you. God is not going to allow you to have a tribe of thousands of people following you. And you don't have a story to teach or train on. <laughs> How? Why, what, would, what, what could you possibly have to say? You don't have anything to say. And so, especially for my friends that are in network marketing or you got your own brand and your business is dictated on other people joining you in business. If you're wondering where the delay of people joining you in your business or your brand, you don't have enough courage to transfer to them. You don't have enough courage to transfer to them because you have not been touched long enough, coached long enough, mentored long enough that when your tribe of people need an answer, you don't have anything to say. And if you have nothing to say, why would God give you a thousand people to lead? Why would God let your business take off when you don't have the courage yet to lead that type of people? Look, when Moses had taken the Israelites out of Egypt, there was a time where the Israelites asked him or, or actually say it, it would have been better if you had, if we had a state in Egypt, it would have been better if you left us in slavery, it would have been better because what you're doing is actually too much, right? And so what God is going to do is he's going to protect you from those type of people because those type of people are the people that will be your thousand, your two or 10,000 people you lead. But see, if you don't have the maturity or the courage to be able to handle someone saying, why'd you take us out of Egypt? And you looking like, wait, are you serious? I was doing this for you. Sometimes the correct answer for people is not enough to change them. Information, some people think that their level of leadership is about to expand because of the information and the knowledge that they have. No, no, no. Wisdom. That's why Solomon told God, give me wisdom to deal with these people. Because information and knowledge is not always received. And most of the time it's not received by someone who's not looking for it. My, my, my point of saying that is step one, the law of proximity. Who's coaching you? Who, 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 based on the re rewrite your goals and you got to put a name by the person who has that already and make sure they're not lying because that's a whole nother conversation but make sure that these people have what you have on your vision board law of proximity no law of proximity then no transfer of courage the next thing that I see that can delay, and if you're watching me on Facebook, please get off of Facebook and go to YouTube. The YouTube link, come off of here and click on my Facebook page and you will see the YouTube link to watch me live on Facebook. And out, all of you guys that are watching me live on YouTube, make sure you notify whenever I do a video. Because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you a video, like I'm, I'm gonna give you at least 100 videos. And if you use them, it's going to really help you. Leadership. Leadership is simply leading from the front. Uh, Myron Golden does a training that I think is incredible about the four levels of value. 
The lowest level of value is implementation. You're working. Right now, some of you guys are in the lowest level of value. You're working towards your goal or your vision. The second lowest level of value is management. You got a team of two, three, four, five people. Some of us teams of two, 300,000 people, and we still act like we still manage people. Managing people is equivalent to thinking that you have enough power to speak to somebody's bones and tell them to rise from the dead. It's never your job to rise dead bones from the dead. It's your responsibility to speak today at Bones. That's it. And because some of us have turned around and allow and allow people to convince us to manage them. When are we doing the training again? <laughs> Lord have mercy. When are we doing the training again? No, I'm not helping you by training you like that. Because you have to move from coaching to mentorship. Some of you guys may have been blessed enough to gain four or five people, or maybe you sold four or five customers. You asking God, where's my other 10, 20, 30,000 customers? They're in your ability. They're in your ability to lead them. But remember the first thing is the law of proximity. So your leadership level will never go up until your courage level goes up. And your courage level never goes up until your mentorship level goes up. And your mentorship level will never go up if you allow the person who has the ability to mentor you to only coach you. If you're getting the same lesson that everyone else is getting, then you're not being mentored. If you only have access to the same training that everyone else has access to, then you're not being mentored. Coaching is the masses. The mentorship is for the few. And some of you are, I'm so happy and grateful and you're mentioning numbers that you, it doesn't matter what you say. It's not magic. The law of proximity has to kick in. Spirits are not taught. They're caught most of the time. So since spirits are caught, that means courage is caught. So if somebody's making a million dollars a month and I'm hanging with them, I get to catch the courage. It's not that that person is going to say something so much different than the next person will say. It's that the person who's saying it actually lives out what they're saying. And so now the courage gets transferred. When the courage gets transferred, the belief gets transferred. When the belief gets transferred, the faith activates. When faith is activated, it's easy for you to work aggressively. Your first assignment is to find a coach. And some of you guys are to find a mentor. And some of you guys are getting coached by people who should be your mentor, but you're so familiar with them that you don't respect their, their, their abilities. And it's not your fault. Sometimes it's the coach, that's the, it's the mentor's fault. So leadership is your ability to lead from the front. Okay. When Moses took the Israelites out of Egypt and they asked him, why did you take us from here? We would have been better with Pharaoh, just like let us stay in slavery, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to move us out of our comfort zone. And we don't like this. What it, to say it in better terms for our for our goals that we want to manifest this year, you're trying to download courage into us that we don't have the capacity for. Sanisha, what do you mean to tell us that you're going to take us from Egypt over into the promised land? This is unfamiliar territory. We don't have the capacity for that type of courage. And since we don't have the capacity for this type of courage, we rather you leave us where we're comfortable at. We don't have the capacity for that type of courage. When courage is transferred, it's because mentorship is transferred. When your coach or your mentor gets on the phone with you and say, call 100, call 100 people. When your coach or your mentor tells you something like that and you don't do it, you, that means that you don't have the capacity for that. You don't have the capacity. And the only way the capacity expands is by the courage expanding. The courage expands only by the conversations you have in. The conversation expands based on the level of numbers you have, the law of proximity 
and the people you can call. And the, the, the type of people you can call is based on the type of people who understand that if they pour into you and give you this information, you're actually going to do something with it. If I train or coach you for three or four months or three or four years and you act the same exact way that when I started coaching you, you can't call me. So since you can't call me, you can't get mentored. Since you can't get mentored, you can't get the courage. Since you can't get the courage, you can't expand the capacity of the courage. Since you can't expand the capacity of the courage, you can't do the activity. There you are 10 years, nothing's changed because you don't have the capacity for that level of change that you're asking for. It takes courage for the goals to advance. It takes courage for you to get to the next level. And the only way the courage activates is through the law of proximity, leadership. Leadership is Moses being able to say to God, why would you tell me to go to Pharaoh multiple times and say, let my people go? Because these fools didn't even want to be, they didn't even want to be, they didn't want to get let go. They wanted to stay there. They don't have the capacity, God, for you to take them out of slavery. So now they hate me because you told me to do something. They would have preferred to stay in Egypt. So number two is the capacity for leadership. Leadership is these people are getting on my nerves. These people are not getting mentored. These people do not have the courage. It's the courage. It's not their, it's not their, it's, it ain't their fault. It, it's spiritual, right? They don't have the courage. The courage, courage only comes from the expansion of the capacity of courage. Courage happens through mentorship. Mentorship happens through your teachability. It's a whole, whole, whole thing. But see, the reason why Moses and Joshua could be leaders is because leadership is, I love you enough that I know that your capacity has not arrived yet to activate the vision that I see for you, but I'm going to keep leading from the front and hopefully I inspire you enough. Let me, let me say it like this. When Moses took the children from Israel, imagine Mo it was thousands and thousands of thousands of people. Imagine Moses all the way up in the front. He take a bullhorn and he's talking to these thousands of people. The people he's talking to with the bullhorn are getting coached. Remember, after coaching comes mentorship. From mentorship comes courage. From courage comes activation. So imagine being part of the three or 5,000 or however many thousand people it was. Moses speaking with a bullhorn saying, we going this way. How you move from coaching to mentorship to become a leader to the masses is the people who heard him on the bullhorn, which means that the way that they heard that information was coaching. But we're going to try to get up here to where Moses is. So now I'm going to try to be sidelined to Moses because I'm going to pick up my, my, my pace because he told me what I got to do in order to get to the promised land. So let me move through the crowd. How do you move through the crowd? By the activity and the assignments that have been given to you and through the activity and the assignments that have been given to you, when you activate those, those activities and those assignments, before you know it, you side to side with the coach. There's no way that you could be side to side with a coach and not eventually get mentored. Mentorship is just law of proximity. If you up here with me and we on this struggle bus together, I'm going to start talking to you and having one-on-one -on -one with you because you up here with me. Some of you guys are allowing yourself to stay in the crowd and you got to move sideline to the person who's doing the coaching. Because when you move sideline to the person who's doing the coaching, how do you move sideline to the person who's doing the coaching? By following instruction. When the coach gets tired or when the mentor gets tired, when they turn left or right, they're going to be talking to you. And all of a sudden now, courage gets transferred because you understand it's not that Moses isn't tired. It's not that Moses isn't frustrated. It's he knows how to deal with his emotions and his frustration. 
if you want to become a leader, you got to go sideline to the coach. Because when you be, that, 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 that's how you establish an army. If I'm sidelined to Moses, he's going to be like, you know what? These people are really getting on my darn nerve. But when he say it, though, it's not that the coach doesn't get tired. When he says it, though, you're going to also see that as he's saying it, his feet keep stepping forward. As he tells you how tired he is, you're going to see him still hit the rock. As he's telling you how sick of these people or how tired he is of these journeys, you're going to still see him go up the mountain. And all of a sudden, because you're getting mentored now, law of proximity, you're like, oh, okay, that's how that work. Just because you're tired don't mean you quit. Just because you say you feel like quitting don't mean you quit. It means you say that you're tired and you keep stepping. But if you in the back with the three or 4,000 people, you think tired means quit because you've never been mentored. You've only been coached. You've never been able to activate the law of proximity to understand what tired really means. It just means that you're tired. It's an emotion. It doesn't change our action. So from activating the law of proximity, then leadership gets established. And from leadership being established, then we understand what emotions are for. Emotions are simply to acknowledge how I feel. Because that's a good thing. Even Jesus wept, right? But the emotions don't dictate actions. So the reason why you need the mentor for them to show you that Emotions don't change where I, how I step, how fast I step and where I'm going. Emotions are there to make you aware of how you feel. But watch this. Are you ready to, are you ready to advance in leadership? Emotions make you aware of how you feel. Because the five or 10,000 people that God has called you to, they got a lot of emotions. Not only do they have a lot of emotions, they don't know how to handle their emotions. And you got to be able to say, I felt like that before. But I still kept going. I know how you feel. Nobody wants a leader that can't relate to them. Nobody wants to be trained or coached by somebody that ain't never cried before, ain't been sad before. So as we respect where God is taking you in your life and in your career, then we understand that emotions are necessary because there are lessons. The lessons get written down so you can teach properly. Don't nobody want to be taught from somebody that ain't experienced nothing. You ain't got nothing to say. I want to know that you cried and then you press play and started training. I want to know that you were depressed and you had a training at seven and you wiped your face and you trained from seven to eight and you could not wait to get off of the training because from eight to seven the next day you went back to being depressed. I want to know how you handle how you feel. And we understand and we're able to bear the burden of that because we understand that we only are going through it because one of them three, 4,000 people that's behind you, they feel that way. You know, and I'm about to stop in a second, but they, the suicide rate in America right now, I think it's every 10 minutes. I, I, I had it on my, I was going to make a um, thing on it. Let me see if I wrote, put it down somewhere. The suicide rate right now in America, suicide, watch this. Yeah, suicide rate. Basically, from, from 2021, every 11 minutes, 
Every 11 minutes, someone commits suicide. Every 11 minutes. So we've been on here for about 50 minutes. We got about five suicides while we were on this training. Suicide is running rapid because the mentors and the leaders that are called to open their mouth and speak won't speak. They won't speak to encourage other people because they feel they don't have anything to say. And the truth is, your story is enough to say. But because your story was so bad and you won't answer the call to leadership, because you were depressed and you finally got out of it or you're still battling with depression and you still find a way to get up every day and do whatever you got to do, because the emotion is so heavy for you, you won't talk. And because you won't talk, every 11 minutes, someone's committing suicide. And also vice versa, polar opposites. If every 11 minutes, someone's not committing suicide, then I could imagine every 11 minutes, someone is deciding not to commit suicide. And, the, and if you ask any person that has been on the verge of that, what made them not do it? Sometimes they hurt someone's training. Sometimes they heard a song. Sometimes they heard a podcast. Sometimes they read a book. Sometimes somebody called them. Sometimes their kids needed them. There are voices that they heard that stopped them from doing that. My point of saying that is, if you understood how important it is for you to talk, if you understood how important it is for you to understand that the emotion is necessary because you have to have grace and you have to be able to relate to people. That's why Jesus said he came eating and drinking with the sinners because I got to let you know I feel you. But I also have to be wise enough if you want to become a leader and get to this next level of your life. The future of you is to handle emotion, to lead other people out of their emotion. And I think something that's been big to me for 2023 is that, you know, I, I, I talk a lot about money and how to make money. But I also realize how much people go through things. And I realize that the reason why suicide is so high and the reason why people do not come out of their dark places is because the people who have been in dark places have allowed themselves to go through the story, but they won't tell the story. They won't, they won't tell you how they overcome it. And you would say, what does this have to do with it? Well, leadership is being able to handle emotions for the, the lesson and then to teach the lesson. You could write down a hundred different stories that you've experienced in your life and give a hundred different lessons. I take pride in myself that you could give me, you could tell me to make 50 videos today. Just give me a topic and I will talk off the top of my head and it's going to be good what I'm talking about. And I realized how many people struggle with having something to say. And I realized why they're struggling to have something to say. Because, are you ready for this? It takes 10,000 hours to be an expert at anything. Some of you guys have went, it's about 8,000 and something hours in a year. Some of you went through experiences for three and four and five years. So you got more than 10,000 hours. So you're more than an expert on that topic. But the emotion of that topic was so dark for you that you just don't talk about it. But see, you got to understand that all stories and all experiences are currency. Open your mouth and talk. What should I talk about today? Uh, talk about that last thing that you got over. Start, I don't know, start from your childhood and work your way up and give all this encouraging information 
And all of a sudden, people become attracted to you. People become attracted to you from the top and the bottom because you open up your mouth and you talk. Now, I'm not going to go into that training, but what I'm going to say is based on what your goals and your dreams are, three things to pay attention to. Number one, the law of proximity. You have to get a, a, a mentor. You have to have 30 minutes to an hour every single week where someone who is in the position that you want to be in is talking to you and coaching you. And I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to be free. <laughs> I coach people and it ain't free. Get a mentor or coach. If you avoid this process, I'm telling you, 2024, you, you will be in the same spot because it's just law. You got to have the transfer of courage. Leadership is whoever's been coaching you for years. I see people do this. They get coached for years by someone who's getting results and they go to somebody else <laughs> to think that different coaching is going to help them out. No, the problem is you're too familiar with your coach and you have never allowed your coach to turn into your mentor or you've even been blessed enough to have a mentorship relationship, but you're so familiar with them that you don't appreciate what they're saying to you. So leadership is imagining Moses with that bullhorn and talking to thousands of people and you saying, you know what? I'm in the back, but I'm gonna move my way to the front. I gotta get sidelined. Only way to get sidelined with somebody who can mentor you is to work on the same level that they do or work harder than them. I tell people that I coach, you know, from the last five or six days, I, I, I can give you what? Seven or eight pieces of content training every day. I see people post once every three or four days. I'm not your mentor. There's no way because that doesn't represent the way that I train. <laughs> so that that's that. So leadership is duplicating out the person who's coaching you and mentoring you and get sidelined to them where your, your mentor or coach can call you and express their feelings because they know you're working just as hard as they are working. And then you'll get the same stuff they got. And then emotions, understanding that your emotions are necessary because it gives you a lesson. And in that lesson, you're able to bless other people with your maturity and your experience. Okay. So replay this over and listen to what I'm telling you. <laughs>